Hi guys, it's Judy again. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for watching today's video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 must do's for your brand new plants when you bring them home. So let's go. So I have talked about some things that you should look for in brand new plants when purchasing. And if you wanna watch that video, I'm gonna leave it linked up here and down below. But now I wanna talk about the next thing to do. The next things to do with your new plants when you bring them home. I've been selling a lot of brand new plants from my shop recently. And these are tips that I repeat over and over and over to a lot of my customers and just general advice that I give to a lot of people. So I thought it'd be great to make a video about it. So the first thing that you should do when you bring your new plant babies home is check over the leaves. Now this is something that you should do when you're purchasing as well, but this is something that you could also do when you bring it home. So this is just another check over of the leaves. Remove any dead foliage that might be there, any dead or damaged foliage. It's just giving it a little bit of a groom over and, uh, and taking off any dead foliage means that you're taking off any potential hiding spots for pests to hide in or to regenerate in or to, uh, what's the word? To repopulate in? I don't think that's the right word I'm looking for, but yeah, take off any dead and damaged leaves. So this is a red, uh, not real, red velvet, it is a green velvet syngonium, Wendelantii, I think the scientific name for it is, if you wanna be specific about that kind of thing. So. This is just one that I've brought in from the shop. It was several different little uh, 100 mil pots that weren't selling. So what I did was I repotted them all into one large pot here. And I think I'm just gonna keep it for myself because it wasn't selling. So I repotted this yesterday and I've just brought it inside. So now what I'm gonna do, and I did this as well when I was repotting, but what I'm gonna do is take off any dead and damaged leaves. So I'm just gonna pick all of those off and like I said before, that removes any space or any place for bacteria or pests or fungus or any kind or just anything to grow. Plus you're also grooming your plant you are making it look a lot more nice and aesthetic for your space. It's crazy what removing any dead or damaged foliage will do for your plant. It just gives it a little pickup, gives it a little, a little groom, and just ensures that your plant is looking the absolute best that it can be. So that's the first thing. These aren't all like in order of importance. It's just 10 things that you should do with your new plants when you bring them home. So often as well with new plants, we'll find that most of the dead or dying off leaves will be at the base of the plant because that's where the older leaves are and the newer leaves at the top are generally the ones that will look the prettiest. So always check at the base or the bottom of the plant. There might be some old foliage dying off at the base there. And just make sure that you pick those out. Okay, number two is check the soil of your plant. Now, I don't usually recommend repotting your plant straight away, but there are some exceptions where I will say it's okay to repot your plant, but do it in the most gentle and careful way possible. And I'll talk about repotting later on as well. So the second thing is to check the soil of your plant. Just have a look, have a little poke through and have a look. Make sure that there aren't any fungus gnats in that soil. Often, a lot of places where you'll go, uh, the people who keep their plant stock might overwater their plants or even plants might come with fungus gnats from the grow house. So often if you squeeze a pot like this, you'll see little fungus gnats fly out. If you do see that, make sure that you pop your plant away from your other plants so that they don't spread the fungus gnats to your other plants. So just check through the soil, have a look through, make sure that there aren't any other insects crawling through there. And this is something that you should be checking when you're buying it as well. But yeah, when you take it home, sometimes you can be so excited at the nursery. Oh my gosh, so many plants and you just buy them all without checking. When you bring it home, definitely check through your plant and make sure that there aren't any nasties in the soil. Also check the quality of the soil of the plant that you have. Maybe it needs repotting and I'll be talking about repotting your plant later on as well. So yeah. Check the soil of your plant, make sure it's okay, make sure it's healthy, well draining, maybe it needs a little bit of a poke or an aeration. Sometimes soil can get really hard and compacted from sitting in a grow house or in a nursery for quite a while. So just give it that little look over and make sure that everything is okay and as it should be. Number three, the question is, to water or not to water? 
when you first get your plant. If you buy plants from me, from my shop here that I run from home, more often than not, you will get a plant that is sitting in a pot that is dry. Sometimes I'll water the day before I open, but most often than not, you'll get a plant that is sitting in a dry pot. Check through the new plant that you have purchased, wherever you purchase it from, and stick your finger in the soil. If it's dry, pop it in the shower and give it a really thorough water through. If it's wet, do not water your plant until it is dry. It's a really basic rule whether it, and it goes for existing plants that you already have or brand new plants that you have. If the soil is dry, give it a shower. If it's wet, let it dry out before you give it its first watering in your home. Often our first inclination for brand new plants, and especially if you're just first starting to collect new plants, often your first inclination is to give it a really good drink of water as soon as you get home, regardless of whether or not the soil is dry. I would just say, hold off on that inclination. I know it's you wanna give your new, your brand new plant some love, but understand that overwatering it can also kill your plant. So just check the soil, if it's wet, let it dry. If it's dry, give it a good drink. It's it's really basic rule of plant watering and this and the same goes for old plants and brand new plants that you've got. Okay, another question that I get for brand new plants is do I need to fertilize this plant? Now, for young plants like this, often when they come from the grow houses or from the nursery or the supplier of the place that you brought it from will have some element of plant food within the substrate that they've planted their that they've planted their plants in. <laughs> So more often than not, your plant is going to be okay left at least three or four months before you need to fertilize it. Especially if you're buying a plant that looks really beautiful and healthy, chances are you probably don't need to fertilize it. To play on the safe side, I wouldn't recommend fertilizing your plant until you've had it for about three or four months. And then when you do that, use a either a slow release fertilizer that you can mix in through the soil or use a liquid fertilizer that is diluted down. Just follow the instructions on the back of the bottle of the liquid fertilizer that you choose to use. Often they will have instructions on how to use that fertilizer. So when I get new plants, I often hold back from fertilizing them because I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of grow house or environment that they've come from. I don't know what is actually already in the soil. So I'll hold back from fertilizing for a few months until it's actually used to my space and I actually know the nature of the plant and I'll see if it's growing, I'll see if it's slowed down growing and then once I've come to know the plant and understand the plant, the needs and nature of it, then I'll go ahead and give it some food. Okay, number five, spray the leaves down of your plant. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with watering and I harp on about this a lot, but it's actually so important. When you pop your plant in the shower to get watered, use the shower head or just the shower coming down to wash the leaves of your plant. This will knock off bugs, this will knock off pests, dust, dirt, anything on the leaves that will keep the leaves from absorbing light. Light is the plant's food and if the leaves are dirty, it's not going to be able to absorb light very well. So showering is one thing. When I say spray the leaves down, I'm talking about treating your plant. Growers are gonna do their best to give you a nice healthy plant that does not have pests in them, but there is no guarantee that you're not going to get a plant that doesn't have something maybe. So it's up to you to give the plant the individual care that it needs. So what I'm talking about here is grabbing your plant, for example. This is a Marble Queen Pothos. Absolutely stunning variegation on the leaves. Isn't it beautiful? So when I get a brand new plant, I am going to give it a spray down of eco oil. So I use a combination of eco oil and Vitality Plus. Now I've been using this for a very, very long time. My plants love it. It keeps the leaves shiny and repels dust off the leaves. And I use this for every time I water, I give the plants a spray down, regardless of whether or not they have pests. It's just a pest management thing. So when you shower your plants, when you water them, give them a spray down of some type of pest management thing. I would recommend neem oil, eco oil, or a Vitality Plus. And this is something that I do sell in my online store and in my physical store that I run here from my home. 
I give them a really good spray down of Vitality Plus. I've only just started using this in the last maybe six months and before that I was using Eco Oil and this works really great wonders as well. But this has proven to be such an effective measure of eradicating spider mites, thrips and fungus gnats. It, it works really, really well. So give your plants a good spray down of some type of pest management plan. This is regardless of whether or not you see pests on your leaves. It's just to give it a really good head start, give it a really good chance at surviving and combating any pests that might be hiding or developing. Now, I talk about pests whether you see them or not. It's I say that because sometimes pests just come out of nowhere. The other day, I discovered that I had mealybugs on one of my marantas and I don't know where it came from because I went through this whole process of of treating the plant, taking it, taking care of it, spraying the leaves down and all that. Sometimes bugs just come out of nowhere and you just and it's just one of those realities. No matter how much you take care of your plants and all that, sometimes bugs just happen. Pests just happen. It's a reality of having indoor plants. And taking these measures with your brand new plants will ensure that you don't bring any other pests in with your existing collection. Okay, the next tip is to isolate your brand new plant from your other plants. Now I know that it's really exciting to get a brand new plant and you just want to integrate it with your existing collection straight away and be like, oh, you'll be so pretty there. You can sit there with your plant friends. But I recommend putting your plant aside in a separate room or in a separate space from your other plants for at least a month or a few weeks at least. So the life cycle of most pests is about two or three weeks. So even though when you first get your plant, you don't see any indication of pests on it, there might be an egg or something in the plant that will hatch within those two or three weeks. So it's really important to keep that plant aside from your other plants in case there is a pest in it. That way it will present itself, you can treat it without having to worry about that pest spreading to the leaves of your other plants. I know it sounds lowly to isolate your plant. We are all very familiar with the terms quarantine and isolation from the last two years that we have all gone through together. But when it comes to plants, it's a good thing. <laughs> It's a, it's a really, I recommend isolating your plants for a few weeks at least. Okay, number seven is acclimate your plant to the space. Now, a lot of people have actually asked me, what does that entail? What does that mean? It means when you have your brand new plant, okay, you, you understand that this Calathea, for example, it is tolerant of lower light. It doesn't like bright direct light on its leaves. It will go crispy up and dry. It likes humidity, it likes warmth, all of these things. Think of the things that your plant needs and pop it in that space, obviously in an isolated manner <laughs> away from other plants. Pop it in that space and don't move it for at least a month, two months. And what this does for your plant is that it gives it a nice stable home to be in, to live in, to thrive in. Be like, okay, so this is my new home. This is where I'm gonna grow. And it will acclimate itself to that space. The opposite of acclimating your plant to a space is putting it where you think it looks pretty, right? So you think, oh, you have a mantel piece or you have a desk, you have a nice uh, hall table that you think a plant would look really great on. So you just pop it in that space and you think, mm, I don't really like it there. I'm gonna pop it on my mantel piece. So you pop it there. And then in another week you think, oh, I need a plant on my bedside table. So you go and put it on the bedside table. Now, what this does to the plant is that it stresses it out. <laughs> Imagine if you had to move house frequently, uh, you had to move house maybe like once a month. Imagine if you had to do that, how stressful that would be. I know that's a lot more stressful for a human to move house than it is for a plant to move spaces, but in a way it's kind of the same deal for a plant. So give it a chance, give it a chance to get used to its new home, get used to its new surroundings. And often as well, when a plant is this young, it needs even longer. It needs a stable place to call home before you start moving it around your house. Also, once you find a happy spot for a plant, once you find that a plant is thriving and happy by a window, for example, or away from a window, for example, then leave it in that space. You get to know what a plant likes and what a plant needs. And once it's found that happy place, 
do not move it. Or if you do want to move it, put it in a space that you feel like the conditions are quite the same. So that's what I mean when I talk about acclimating your plant. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about repotting. Repot your plant if necessary. Now, I have often received brand new plants from my suppliers and often they are very young plants, like this one for example. This is a very young plant. It doesn't have any roots coming out the top. It doesn't have any roots coming out the bottom. And this plant, this would have been grown from a cutting, from a propagation, which means that the roots haven't quite established, they're not very mature, and it hasn't quite filled up the pot yet, which means you do not need to repot your plant. That is the general condition that most plants, especially plants this size, will be in. You do not need to repot it. Now, when I say repot if necessary, that's in the case of this Calathea, for example. Now, when I talk about repotting, it's not necessarily going up a pot size. Sometimes it might mean if the quality of the soil that it's planted in is a really bad quality soil. Now, this grower in particular, I've found that the soil that they put their plants in is more of a peat moss mix and it's not very nice. So it's not even soil, for example. So if I were to repot this, I would very gently take it out of the pot, shake off a little bit of that peat moss and replace it with a nice, chunky, well-draining soil mix and then pop it back into the same size pot. Repotting doesn't always mean going up a pot size. It might mean changing out the soil. It might mean adding a certain type of substrate to the soil that will allow for better drainage. So have a look at the quality of your soil. And that's what I mean when I say repot if necessary. When you are repotting though, same goes for it. Don't shock the plant with moving, constant moving around. When you're repotting your plant, don't like shake all the soil off the roots, like disturb the roots. Disturb the roots of your plant as minimally as possible. And that goes for any time that you're repotting as well. I very gently take a plant out of the pot, give it a bit of a shake to shake off any of the old soil, and then repot it in some fresh soil. Sometimes as well, you'll get bigger plants, more mature plants from the grow houses that are quite root bound. And that's another instance where I would repot if necessary. You would go up a pot size, but again, that's another thing that you could probably leave until after it's been acclimated to your space. You could, you just try and minimize the amount of stress for the plant as much as possible in its new space. Another reason that you would want to repot your plant is if it has pests in the soil. Now, first of all, I wouldn't recommend buying a plant if you can see it has pests in the soil to begin with, but if you've taken it home and you see it's got like fungus gnats or some type of eggs in the soil, then that's another instance where I would recommend that you repot. Just understand that sometimes, like I said before, it doesn't necessarily mean going up a pot size. <laughs> Number nine, wait before you prune or take cuttings off your plant. I know that it's quite exciting to get such a nice brand new lush plant and you immediately want to make brand new propagations or babies from your plant, especially if it's something that's quite, you know, large or lush or has a lot of stems growing out. If it's a more mature plant, maybe it would be okay. So for example, you can buy plants that are this big and it's quite exciting to take cuttings from it. But if it's something this, like this small and it doesn't have a lot of growth on it just yet, maybe wait before you take cuttings or prune your plant. It's quite young. Again, cutting your plant might shock it, especially because it's had so many brand new things happening to it happening to it within a very short space of time. So wait before you prune it or take cuttings. Um, it might be okay if you've got like a really big tree and you and it's going like every which way and you wanna cut it back. But I would recommend at least until after you've acclimated your plant, whether it's like, whether it's like one or two, three, four months, just give it some time to acclimate before you prune it or take cuttings from your plant. It's just a little recommendation. It's not a it's not a must not do, but it's definitely recommended that you let your plant just kind of chill for a minute. <laughs> Number 10 and the last one is keep the temperature constant between like 15 to 25 degrees within your home. So in my space here, I try and keep it a constant like I don't 
let the temperature of it's summer at the moment i don't let the air con go any lower than 23 degrees and that's perfectly fine by me it's not too freezing cold in this space and it's still warm enough for the plants to enjoy a humid and warm space so when you get your brand new plant don't pop it in a really cold bathroom or a really cold laundry or in a really warm bedroom. Just try and keep it in a space where you're acclimating it in a nice constant, you know, between 15 to 24, 25 degrees. So it's just minimizing the amount of shock or stress that this plant is going through. And that's basically the whole idea behind the avoiding to repot straight away, avoiding to cut straight away, um, just trying to recreate a space where it's natively from or where it originated from, like the grow house. It has, if you think about it, big greenhouses have a lot of airflow, they have warmth, they have light, humidity. Try and recreate that space for your brand new plant and chances are they're gonna absolutely love you. So those are the 10 tips that I have for must-dos or very highly strongly recommended things for you to do to your brand new plants when you have purchased them and brought them into your home. Oh, and one more thing, another must do when you buy your brand new plant is to enjoy it. Enjoy your plant, love your plant. I know that sometimes we stress out so much. It's like, oh, I don't wanna kill my plant. What do I do? I don't wanna kill my plant. But at the same time, while it's important to equip ourselves with good information and good advice for our plants, enjoy it as well. Try not to stress out too much about it. Plant care is actually quite easy. The number one tip that I have for brand new plant parents is don't overwater your plant. I think that's the number one killer for most indoor plants and new plant parents. And you know, we're all gonna lose one early on in our journey one way or another. I know I've lost several plants to overwatering early on in my plant collection journey. But that's the thing. It's it's about equipping ourselves with knowledge and the right information and just finding people who are happy to have a chat with you about it. And if anyone comes to my shop and purchases plants from me, I'm more than happy to have a chat with you and help you out with your brand new plant and give you some good information. And part of that is YouTube videos. So if you ever send me a message and say, hey, I need advice, and I send you a link to one of my YouTube videos, please don't feel offended that I've sent you just a video link because I repeat myself a lot, <laughs> a lot. I get the same questions over and over and over. And that's why I've created this video today. And I just hope that you guys found it helpful. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful and informational. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I would love it if you guys would subscribe. It would help me out so, so much. So thank you guys for watching. That is it for this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye. <coughs> Excuse me, I just choked on my own saliva. <coughs> or the supplier of the place that you brought it from. Fungus gnat. I really hope I turned my mic on. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Shoo!